Hi guys, welcome back to Debris Day. Today on Debris Day, it's the second part of the Tesla Powerwall. Today, we're gonna to go and look at the app. Let's go guys. So guys, as you know, we've had the Powerwall installed for about three weeks now. Um, and we have taken some time to get some data stored up in the Tesla Power app. And today's video, I wanna go through a couple of things. I wanna go through the Powerwall app, show you the ins and outs of that. I want to show you our previous service provider, energy service provider, OVO, and why we're potentially moving away from them to Octopus. I also wanna talk about the uh, anxiety you get when, uh, when looking at your power wall to be fully charged from the solar. I just wanna talk about the changes that we've adapted in, into our lives um, to manage having the power wall and having the solar on the roof. So without further ado, let's get in, let's talk about the app. Okay, what I wanted to show you is the uh, Tesla app. So as you can see, when you log in, you can see Dubri's home. Uh, you can see my power wall is at 100% and you can see we've got solar panels on the roof here. Um, first things first, I wanna go into power flow. Um, and there's been many uh, videos on this, but I just wanted to take, uh, show you my take on this. So you can see currently uh, it's middle, uh, sorry, it's actually just beginning in May. It's middle of the day and it's very poor at the moment. We're getting 1.3 kilowatts of solar and you can see that some of that solar is going off to the home, 0.4 kilowatts, and a lot of it's going to the grid. Now, the reason that it's going to there, not to the power wall, is because the power wall, as that front screen, is at 100%. Um, what you can do then, if you click on any one of these icons, so let's click on the, the solar one, you can see how much solar we've generated over the day. So from about half six, seven o'clock in the morning, we start to generate energy and it's up to noon at the moment. And in total, we generated 16.1 kilowatt hours of solar. If you scroll up, you can see the destination. So we've sent 27.5% to the home, 66.3% to the power and 6.2% of that energy to the grid. Now, what's quite cool about this app is that the various buttons at the top here, you can add and remove. So this is the uh, home usage, this is solar, uh, this is power wall, and then this is the grid. So if we start on the home, so as you can see, we've got a few things happening overnight, and this is things like lights going on and security lights and things on standby, so it's very low energy. Um, but you can see then it ramps up from about eight o'clock when we woke up, um, and then we've got peaks and trots here, we put the kettle on, have a coffee, those kind of things. Again, you can scroll up, you can see how much is from the grid, from the power wall, and from solar. Um, what you can then do is overlay on top of that uh, the the next energy usage. So this happens to be solar. So you can see solar compared to the home use. So I can remove the home use and, and show the home use. Um, and then when you scroll down, you can see again, total home usage and total solar energy. And you can add all four onto there. Um, what I found out the other day was though, if we're just say looking at solar and you highlight, so press and hold, you can find out how much on that particular time. So there's Friday the 1st of May at 11.20, uh, 0.5 kilowatt from uh, the home and 2.8 kilowatt from solar. So you can see we're generating more energy from solar than we're using in the home, which is, is pretty neat. And then all of this data, if you scroll up, you can download that data onto Excel and you can monitor your data of your, your usage. Um, what's really interesting though, is when you look at the grid and we got, um, information of, of from the grid, so how much uh, energy you're taking from the grid or putting to the grid. Um, you can see here we've put most energy into the grid rather than taking from the grid. Now, if you click on this today button, um, you can look at the day, week, month, year, or lifetime. So let's look at the, uh, the week. And as you can see, we've got energy going to and from the grid. So to grid, 6.9 kilowatts for the week, and from grid, 6.4. So actually put more into the grid than we're taking out. Now you can add on to that the battery, so you can see um, how much you're taking from the power, 32.6 kilowatt hours for the week. Uh, we can then add the solar. So uh, last week uh, we generated 77.5 kilowatts of energy for the solar, and then home usage is 67.7. So our solar is more than enough covering how much usage we have in the home. Um, so that's uh, the graph. So you can then change this for the month, the year, or the week and you can get a good view. So let's go back to um, April. Uh, and you can see all of our energy there usage for uh, for the, the month of April. Now we can again, turn on and turn these things off. So uh, what was really interesting is that in month of April, when we had the system installed, so far we've generated 612 kilowatt hours of solar energy, and we're only using about 300 
uh, kilowatt hours of, of energy. So our solar is much more, um, our solar covers much more than, than required for the energy that we consume. And any of that additional energy typically would go to the power wall. And as you can see here, we've used some of the power wall energy, 138 kilowatt hours, um, where the solar has charged it up. So that's uh, pretty much the uh, the app. Um, what I also want to say is when you're using the uh, energy from the grid, so here in month of April, we'll use 10.2 kilowatts. Um, we've got from and to the grid. So we sent 302 kilowatts to the grid and we took 10.2 kilowatts from the grid. Now, the idea in spring, summer and possibly autumn is that we take very, very little from the grid and put all of the energy into the grid. Now, we recognize in winter, this will be the other way around. We'll take quite a lot of energy from uh, from the grid because we won't have the sunshine. But at the moment with our current service provider, it's reasonably expensive. Um, it's about uh, 12 to 15 per kilowatt hour taken from the grid. Um, so we are in the process of considering moving to uh, a new service provider, which I'll cover shortly. So um, that's the app. One thing I do notice is that I regularly keep checking the app. Um, and it's quite interesting because you see at the moment, we obviously got the full power wall um, and you get kind of uh, a little bit anxious if you don't have your power wall full of energy, especially in an evening and you realize you've got to take from the grid. It's actually not a showstopper, but <laughs> what it means is that you're constantly watching going, oh, shall we turn that light off or shall we turn that light on? Okay, what I also wanted to show you is the cost of energy and why we thought it was a really good idea to have the solar power and the Tesla power wall installed uh, on our property. So what we're looking at here is my uh, existing service provider, which is OVO, OVO, and they've been absolutely brilliant up until this point, just that it's now become not cost effective for us to stay with that company. So we're looking here at the cost of our energy in April. Um, 2020 total cost of energy 27 pounds 33 pence and total energy use 161 kilowatts now give you an idea where do you think we had our power wall and solar installed yep that's right on the 9th of april um as you can see our energy consumption on average is about two to two pound fifty a day on average um it goes up and down up and down over the of the various uh, months if i look at say uh, May, uh, so March, you can see constantly it's anywhere between two and three pounds, sometimes as high as five pounds fifty a day. So quite a lot of energy is being consumed by us. Um, when we've installed the power wall, you can see it's dropped down, dropped down, completely down to 0.4p, 3p, 3p, 6p per day. And that's where we're just taking a tiny piece of energy from the grid. Um, I think it's to do with checking that we've got the connection to the grid. So it's very, very small. Or during the unlikely event whereby, say, and in an evening, where we've got the kettle on and we may have a washing machine or oven on around uh, dinner time in the evening, we may find that we need a little bit more energy. It will take it from the grid and, and use the power wall, solar if it's still working in an evening, um, if it's still sunshine, it's still out, and if not, it will top it up from the grid. Um, what you'll notice here on the 29th of April is that we had a couple of cloudy days, so we didn't have much energy in the power. We used what we could, but then we had to go to the grid to get some energy, so 68p and 27p. What I hope is, though, is that the energy that we've produced and sent back to the grid will be more than enough to cover off the days where we have to use energy from the grid. So to give you an idea um, of energy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a couple of videos of these over the next few months, sort of spring, summer, autumn or winter to show you the savings and, and the costs and potentially how much it will, uh, you know, make us money or, or it won't make us money over the, over the time over the year. I want to show, I want to demonstrate the costs um, for using the system, uh, the various quarters during the year um, to demonstrate how efficient or inefficient it is over the spring, summer, autumn and winter. As you can see at the moment, on average, we're, we're costing from the grid about three to four P a day, which is obviously virtually nothing. Um, and our energy has come down significantly. Now, if I compare this um, from April 2020 to April 2019, if I go backwards, what you'll be able to see is a huge difference. So our bill for April, uh, we used 470 kilowatt hours for 83 pounds, and now it's 27 pounds. If we go back one more, if we go to March, which is a full month, 524 kilowatt hours. So I expect the energy usage to be around sort of 500 kilowatt hours, 82 pounds. Now, if we go back to March 2020, which is um, a year later, of course, just before we had it installed, 
ING usage was 677. So we had a massive increase in energy, 115 pounds. And we go to April and it's dropped down to 27 pounds. And that's not even a full month using the solar. So as you can see, um, major difference in, in cost savings per month. So that's going to hopefully far away the cost that um, we had to pay for the solar panels on the roof and the Tesla power wall. So at the time of, uh, of creating this video, it's quite expensive to take energy from OVO. Um, it's about 12 to 15p per kilowatt hour uh, during the daytime, and uh, slightly cheaper in the evening. So one of the things we're considering is moving across to Octopus. Um, Octopus is another energy provider that has an option of Octopus Go, which means between uh, midnight 30, so to half uh, half midnight and 4.30 in the morning is only 8p per kilowatt hour. So the idea is that we set the power wall up to recharge from the grid, especially in winter, um, between half midnight and 4, 4.30 in the morning at 8p per kilowatt hour. And then we use that energy from the power wall during the day. So guys, that's the, um, the app and you can see our energy consumption uh, through the app and also you can see the energy consumption through our service provider. Um, what I do want to mention is about how it's changed the way that we interact with things inside of the house. Um, prior to having the power wall and the solar on the roof, we were regularly just turning on kettles and, and um, turning on your dishwasher in any evening or whenever you needed it. And I would explain why our energy is pretty much... Uh, well, that'd explain why energy is quite high uh, compared to perhaps some other people. We just didn't care, we just turned things on when we wanted them. Since we've had the power wall and since we had the solar on the roof, it's a little bit different now. Um, what we uh, have implemented into our lifestyle is that if we want to run the washing machine, the kettles or dishwasher, those kind of things, which most people seem to have these days, um, we run them during the day when the sun shines on or when the power wall is full. We typically restrict using those items in an evening um, when we don't have energy from the sun. So in essence, we're getting free energy to wash our clothes and wash our, our you know, dishes and cups and that kind of stuff. So it is a slight mental change. So what we might do if we've had our evening meal, we might go and load up the dishwasher, uh, put everything in, but not turn it on. As soon as I come down in the morning to make a cup of tea or something like that, then I'll quickly bung on the dishwasher, hit the start button and off it goes. So we actually uh, change the way that we use our energy and we're more energy efficient. The other thing we're more aware of is turning things like lights off in an evening. So uh, you've heard that phrase, always oh, like Blackpool around here. Well, uh, it used to be kind of Blackpool around here, but not anymore. So what we do, we simply, you know, when we leave a room, turn the light off. Uh, we do have energy saving LED bulbs throughout the house. So that obviously reduces our consumption of electricity anyway, but just the ability to turn those lights off means instead of using a kilowatt in an evening, Per hour, you might be using 0.9 or 0.8 kilowatt hour, and it really makes you think. Anyway, that's our Powerwall app, and that's how we're getting on with it at the moment. I do plan on doing a video on uh, every single season, so spring, summer, autumn, winter, and to uh, report back to you about how we found the power wall, how we found the solar, how we've adapted, um, what our energy savings are, and at that point, we can give you an idea what our return on investment will be. Hope you found it useful. Got any questions or queries, let me know uh, down below. Thank you so much for watching Debris Day, and I'll see you next time. Cheers then. Bye, guys.